At around 1.27 in the morning of the 26th of March 2024, the Singaporean flagged container vessel Dali collided with the key bridge which carries Route 695 across the 2.5km span of the Patapsco River in Baltimore, Maryland. The impact caused a chain reaction leading to the bridge's complete collapse within seconds. So what happened? How could a ship so easily collapse a bridge that stood in place for almost 50 years? Throughout the evening of the 25th of March 2024, the container vessel Dali was alongside her berth at the southern end of the Seagrip Marine Terminal, which is a massive facility in Baltimore capable of accommodating some of the world's biggest ships. The Dali, for example, is around 300 metres long, with a gross tonnage of just under 100,000 tonnes. Late in the evening, she completed the final checks for departure and was ready to get underway for her next passage towards Colombo, Sri Lanka. It was a lovely evening with light winds from an east by north direction and minimal tidal flow as it was approaching low tide. Shortly after midnight, now on the 26th of March, she made fast two tugs, one forward and one aft, and with their assistance came bodily to port off the berth. Once she had opened to a ship's width or so from the quay, she came ahead on her engines to get some water flow over the rudder and prepare for the turn to port towards the main channel. As the speed picked up to three or four knots or so, the two tugs lay alongside her on the port side and just ran with her as she completed her turn. By 1.10, the turn was complete and Dali entered the main channel, at which point the tugs were stood down so that she could continue to pick up speed. When you're working with tugs, you need to ensure you keep your speed down low because tugs are at massive risk of capsizing if you go too fast. Check out my video about tugging tugs if you want to know a little more about that. Anyway, with the tugs stood down, Dali continued following the channel outbound, lining up for the main span under the key bridge, which is the only place large enough for these sort of massive vessels to fit under. She continued to increase speed, reaching around 8.7 knots by 126, just before the bridge. But then something went wrong. She started turning to starboard, just around the same point where the Curtis Bay Channel joins the main channel. But why? Were there some interactive effects maybe? For example, if your starboard bow is no longer subject to pressure from a bank, it could cause a turn to starboard. If that did happen though, the ship's bridge is full of professionals who are more than capable of correcting it with some engine and rudder movements, so was there something else stopping them? If, for example, the ship suffered some sort of power failure at that point, you would expect it to veer off under the effects of interaction at exactly the position where the underwater profile of the channel changes, like where another channel joins from the side. Either way, regardless of her reason for leaving the channel, at that point the crew knew there was a serious problem. The tugs that had been stood down from the earlier manoeuvre sprang back to life and started heading back towards the Dali at full speed, but unfortunately it was just too late. She was now so close to the bridge and carrying so much momentum that there was nothing anyone could do. At 1.29 local time on the 26th of March, she struck the southern tower which just didn't stand a chance against more than 100,000 tonnes of vessel and cargo travelling at 7.5 knots. The collapse of the southern tower led to the collapse of spans on both sides of the river which in turn led to the collapse of further spans as the chain reaction travelled along the bridge. 15 minutes later at 1.43 the first tug arrived on scene but by then the damage was already done. From that point on the priority was search and recovery. Now clearly I'm releasing this video within hours of the event so we don't yet know how the story will end. We also don't have all the facts yet so everything I've been through is just my interpretation of what I've seen based on the information that's been released to the public. The cause of the turn to starboard is unknown but interaction effects could be the reason behind it if there was no way for the crew to counter them. A blackout could be a reason for the crew being unable to counter the turn and it would explain why the tugs responded before the ship hit the bridge. That could also explain the plume of black smoke you can see in news reports and the lack of exhaust smoke coming from the ship at the moment of impact. As I say though, at this point in time we just don't know so I encourage you all to keep an eye out for the official report when it comes so that we can all learn from what happened and attempt to prevent the same sort of thing happening again in the future.